Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Ravel 148 scale JU87 G1 Stuka Tank Buster build. And in this video, we are going to be painting the, fig the figures. And uh, we've already gotten a little, little ways on them. We got the face and the hands painted. We have the yellow vest, the inner vest, I should say. And the German blue uniform or flight suit color on. And what we're going to do next, we're going to try to, oh, we did the boots brown as well. And what we're going to do next on these figures is I'm going to try to paint the white uh, seat belts straps on them. And if I'm very careful, maybe the lighter brown for that. Well, we're going to have to do the, around the collar, they have the puffy kind of white, uh, what do they call it, the fleece? Is it fleece? Whatever the puffy collars were to keep them warm. We'll have to paint that as well. And then maybe do the brown. We'll see how it goes. Get the white. I shook it up a little bit, but it's always good to... Never hurts to shake the paint a little more. Get it all mixed up. And this is going to require the glasses to be removed so I can see better. And we'll just put a little of this white on there. And let's see how steady my hands are tonight. Let's move this out of the way. The scissors can go over here along with the clippers and the tape. I'm working on the design for my, I'm going to have a little rounder. And uh, I've been painting, <laughs> painting, been printing the uh, um, 3D printing my paint organizers. And I'll just pull them forward here. You've already seen the testers one and the uh, Vallejo combo tray or paint organizer. And I have painted, designed a new organizer that can hold like your model masters, your Tamiya's, or I have these, uh, they're called Apple, Apple Barrel Paints. <laughs> they're your acrylic Walmart specials. Them can also go there. But running out of room on my work surface here as much as I Love how much more space that I got. It started running out of room. So what I did is I 3D printed this box shaped thing, which I'm calling a riser. Kind of scratched this one. Anyway, let me grab a different one here. Better representation. Anyways, it kind of keys in to either one of these. On these two, I got these little feet here. To keep it up off the table a little bit just in case something spills or whatever but these actually will interlock and uh, sit on top of this riser and i left the riser open so i figured that if i have like multiple colors of the same paint i could just store the multiple colors in there and then these will slide together and now all of a sudden it's a four tier Plus storage, slide it away if I want. So, been having fun doing stuff on the 3D printer. But enough about that stuff. This is this is supposed to be a Stuka video, and all of a sudden you see where my mind wanders sometimes. So I'll just put that up there like that, get it out of the way again, and bring our let's start with the pilot. Take the glasses back off, set them over here, and let's see what we can do here on this uh, seat belt. I'm already going to have to get more paint because that was more, more of just a bubble than a glob of, glob of paint. So I'm probably going to want to start with, but it's going to be difficult.
There we go. Got that initial spot done. And that'll probably be better having more paint. There we have it. Turn it this way and try to get the rest of it. There's the lap belt. This is going to be extremely difficult. I don't know if I got a thinner brush than this. It's a little more pointed. Is this better? Not really. This may be a... Maybe a job for the toothpick. I probably should have done the belt before the vest, but... No, you know how it goes. Yeah, we're gonna do some touch-up. And not too bad. These figures are so tiny, it's kind of, kind of hard to, kind of do it without a very fine, fine brush, which I do not have. So what we'll do is the best that we can with what we have, and then we'll just have to touch up the yellow a little bit. And perhaps a little bit of the gray. I think I mentioned it before in one of these videos while I'm painting. I gotta give them people credit that do the little gaming miniatures. I do not have the uh, the steadiness of the hand and the. Um, The steadiness of the hand and the, the patience that it would take to paint very, very small figures. But I will say this is going a lot better than I thought it would. And there we have it. And let's get the little little puffy around his. Actually, that needs to be. That's more of a cream color than the white, I think. The puffy, puffy thing. There we go. Then I. That's about the only real line. I'm sure this crosses in the back more, but it kind of gets really, really faint to where I can't really see it. That and they'll be sitting in a seat. This one you can see a little bit better. This one is going to be something. Might be able to get the waist a little easier. I'm surprised how well the uh the coverage on this is going i did a little better on that one 
They didn't get as much all over the place. Because I think the worst one was that kind of tannish color for the the seat. I, I took three coats to cover that one really well. This guy's kind of kind of holding the must be an uncomfortable seat belt. There we are. Or harness or whatever they, the proper term would be. Try to keep my finger out of there so you can see that I'm doing something. Now let's make an attempt at that one. I was thinking maybe grabbing the toothpick for that, but... That'll work. And since the the gunner's arm is in the way of we get away with not having to do the the one that goes down to the lap on that side. Okay, this one. Yeah, that won't be so bad if I only have to touch up a little of the the yellow. And I imagine since they are white belts that it's probably not going to be a big deal if it isn't completely covered. That would give it a little weathered look. Like that. Yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with that. That ended up for as small as that is. And the detail isn't too great in some spots, so probably shouldn't smudge it like that. Did I smudge yours? No, good deal. It's kind of what I do like about the Vallejo paints. They tend to dry pretty quick. So there we got some white harness straps there. Boy, I wasted some paint. I didn't think it would cover that well, honestly. But let's get a towel here, and I think we'll we're gonna go ahead and give the uh, we're gonna give the helmets a coat. And that, I had the paints all out that I wanted to use. And of course the... Missing one. Where'd that one go? I'm really good at uh, misplacing things. Brown, violet. No, it wasn't that one. Mud brown... Was it Mud Brown? Or no, it was Medium Brown, I think. Yeah, Medium Brown and Dark Brown. Because these are the uh, German colors. So we can put the white back. And then we'll get a little bit of this Medium Brown, I believe it was going to be. Because yeah, we did the Dark Brown for the boots. Yeah, that's looking right. Flip this around here. 
another bubble. Camo medium brown. Yep. So since th this one's dried a little bit more, we're going to go ahead and get the... Do that one. Yeah, that was more of a bubble than paint. Let's start with the front here. And it looks like, kind of like they're wearing headsets too, which would make sense so they can communicate with each other. Oh yeah, that's the one I wanted. Put a little more paint there though. Didn't do the best on the, I missed a ejector pin on the back of their head. I wonder if it's the same on the other one. And this particular plane is not like the P40 where you get the option of having the open glass, I don't think. I think it's closed glass on it. So I don't know how much of this you're going to see. That looks cool. A little helmet there. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Them headsets are definitely going to be a toothpick. Toothpick paint. When I used to do models as a... When I was a kid and teenager, for all fine details, it was a toothpick. I never had fine brushes. If I get more into miniature painting, I'll probably get one of those precision sets. I'll have to check the instructions, but the, it doesn't show to paint it that. It just says paint the helmet, but I, I guess I'll probably paint the headsets black, I guess. All right, there we go. Try to give you a closer look here. It's really hard to record doing something like this, but I would do a little touch up on the to straighten out that belt. Probably end up doing that with toothpick, just get rid of the waviness a little bit. 
and focus. That one turned out a little better, but the second time usually is always a little better. The more practice you get, you know. But there, we have did a little progress on the Stuka, kind of showcasing 3D printed stuff. And I think that's the finale. Well, I'll end up painting the headsets, I guess, black once that dries. Do some touch up and then next video. I had some issues with, uh... oh, that's what I wanted to discuss in this video. You'll see, probably saw it in my Shelby video. You'll notice that all the black boxes are no more. It's all black to the dark German gray. I, uh, for weathering, I'm going to make sure that I use a standard uh, gloss coat over the part before I start doing, uh, like, panel line accent. What I did is I painted all these boxes a uh, semi-gloss black, if you haven't seen the video. And then after that, what I did is I took some of this matte varnish from Vallejo, and I brush painted it, and maybe that had something to do with it, I don't know. But after it dried, we did the panel line accent to try to just bring out some of the, kind of dirty it up a little bit, basically. And then I took some thinner on a Q-tip, very little bit of thinner, not really much anything at all. And then I went and I was going to clean up the panel line accent. And I'll be darned if it didn't just wipe the paint completely off of it. <laughs> so I had to strip it down because it was all, as you can imagine, putting thinner on paint would be. Uh, with the P40, I didn't have that issue because I actually used um, enamel gloss coat, I believe it was. And... Uh, didn't have an issue with it. I'm sure the thinner probably ate away at the gloss coat or the uh, clear coat a little bit, but it didn't damage the paint underneath. So what I'm going to do is redo the the black boxes here, and I'm going to give it a good clear coat with the normal clear coat that I'm used to using, not this uh, acrylic type. And then I'll redo the panel line wash, and that should cure that problem. Me not being used to acrylics and I'm really not a pro at painting to begin with anyway so I don't know what reacts with what as you probably noticed in some of my other videos before but it's kind of a trial and error thing for me. And uh, that's kind of another reason why I didn't do any videos last week because I was too busy redoing stuff that I already did before. <laughs> but anyway such is life. And it's, it's part of the experience. Not a big deal. It's plastic and paint. It can be fixed. So, anyways. Rambled long enough, I think. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And we'll see you guys next time.